He is known for writing The Vanity of Dogmatizing, which aimed to promote religious toleration, the scientific method, and freedom of thought. He is recognized for engaging with skepticism and proposing a modification in Sepsis Scientifica. His name is Joseph Glanville. In the heart of 17th century England, a philosopher and writer named Joseph Glanville embarked on a mission to challenge the prevailing dogmas of his time. With his influential work, The Vanity of Dogmatizing, Glanville fearlessly attacked the scholasticism and religious persecution that plagued his society. His plea for religious toleration, the scientific method, and freedom of thought became a rallying cry for those who sought a more open and enlightened world. But Glanville's intellectual journey didn't stop there. He delved into the realm of skepticism, proposing a modified approach in his work, Sepsis Scientifica. With an explicit address to the prestigious Royal Society, Glanville showcased his deep insights and the society responded by electing him as a fellow. From that moment on, Glanville assumed the role of a spokesperson, advocating for a plain use of language, untainted by distorted definitions and excessive metaphor. His quest for clarity extended to the realm of preaching as well, where he championed simple speech over bluntness, seeking to strike a balance that resonated with all. Glanville's intellectual prowess continued to shine in his essay, The Agreement of Reason and Religion, where he asserted that reason and dissenting beliefs were incompatible. He vehemently criticized the tradition of imaginative illumination in religion, denouncing it as a denigration of reason itself. Through his allegorical masterpiece, Antifanatical Religion and Free Philosophy, Glanville masterfully intertwined modern and ancient thought, placing the Cambridge Platonists at the center of intellectual turmoil. Yet, he realized that reason alone couldn't unravel the mysteries of the supernatural. Thus, he embarked on empirical investigations of supposed supernatural incidents, conducting interviews and examining the scenes of these events. Joseph Glanville's unwavering pursuit of truth and his defense of reason against dogma left an indelible mark on the intellectual landscape of his time. His works fueled the flames of change and inspired generations to question, explore, and push the boundaries of knowledge. As Glanville himself once said, my life will recur in exactly identical fashion, echoing his belief in the perpetual cycle of inquiry and the power of the human intellect. Joseph Glanville, a philosopher and theologian, is widely known for his work on the supernatural and witchcraft. His influential book, Sagicismus Triumphatus, challenged the prevailing skepticism towards witchcraft and advocated for its existence and supernatural power. Glanville's interest in the topic was sparked during a house party at Ragley Hall, where he engaged in discussions with other intellectuals such as Henry Moore and Francis Van Helmont. In Sagicismus Triumphatus, Glanville argued that denying the existence of spirits and demons would lead to atheism, rebellion, and social chaos. He believed that the Bible provided ample evidence of the existence of spirits and that rejecting such beliefs undermined the foundations of society. Glanville promoted the idea that judicial procedures, like those conducted by Robert Hunt, a justice of the peace, should be accepted as valid tests of evidence. To question their legitimacy, according to Glanville, would be to undermine society itself. Glanville's views on witchcraft and the supernatural deeply influenced others, including Cotton Mather, who used Glanville's work to justify the infamous Salem witch trials. The impact of Sagicismus Triumphatus extended beyond North America, as it was translated into German and used as a reference by other scholars. However, Glanville also faced criticism, particularly from Christian Thomasius, a philosopher who vehemently attacked Glanville's belief in witchcraft. Glanville's exploration of the supernatural continues to be significant as we contemplate the mysteries of the unseen world. His work reminds us of the need for open-mindedness and humility in the face of the unknown. Furthermore, it cautions against the dangers of dismissing spiritual beliefs without careful consideration, as such dismissals may lead to an erosion of societal foundations. Glanville's writings serve as a reminder that exploring the supernatural can offer insight into human nature and the complex workings of the world around us. Joseph Glanville, a prominent philosopher of his time, found himself entangled in controversy due to his views on atheism, skepticism, and Aristotle. Despite his own perspectives, he ironically faced charges of atheism. This accusation arose amidst a heated debate with Robert Cross, specifically regarding the relevance of Aristotle's work, which was considered a representation of the middle way. In his fervent defense of himself and the Royal Society, Glanville published a work titled, Plus Ultra, where he criticized the prevailing teachings of medicine. However, this led to a counterattack by Henry Stubb in his retort, the plus ultra reduced to a non-plus. Moreover, Glanville's thoughts on Aristotle drew the ire of Thomas White, a Catholic priest known as Blacklow. In his response to Stubb titled, A Prefatory Answer to Mr. Henry Stubb, Glanville clearly defined the philosophy of the virtuosi. 
He advocated for respecting the plain objects of the senses as a source of limited but reliable certainty, suspending judgment in the absence of sufficient proof, and using this balanced approach to combat both skepticism and credulity. Despite this, Glanville vehemently denied being a skeptic when addressing White. Glanville's work, Philosophia Pia, focused explicitly on the intersection between the experimental philosophy of the Royal Society and religion. This treatise was a response to criticism of the society by Merit Kassaubin. Within its pages, Glanville cast doubt on the origins of enthusiasm, a target of his critique among the nonconformists. Furthermore, he addressed the criticisms of Richard Baxter, who accused the Royal Society of harboring atheistic tendencies. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.